So good afternoon. My name is Andrea Jenkins. I'm the vice president of the Minneapolis City Council and the chair of the Committee of the Whole. And with me is Council Member Philippe Cunningham, vice chair of the Committee of the Whole. And before we call our regularly scheduled meeting to order, I want to take a few minutes to celebrate city employees who are being honored today as superstars as part of the city's Star Awards Employee Recognition Program. The Star Awards are part of the Public Service Recognition Week, and we'll be recognizing employees in four categories today. And I do want to apologize that I wasn't able to be at the earlier ceremony. Um, we were off doing city business, but um, our first superstar is the City Star which is awarded to an employee who makes a significant impact on the city. And um, let's just find that city star. Okay. That is not here. <laughs> you think it is? Can you, can you come up? Nope. It says co-stars, north stars, shining stars. <laughs> Co-star one of three, north star, shining star. So. <laughs> We'll come back to that one, how about <laughs> We will find uh, that <laughs> resolution for, I can tell you who the winner is. <laughs> There it is, right there. <laughs> Yay! So this year, the award is being presented to Chuck Lutz from CPED, um, or the Community Planning and Economic Development Department. Do you care to read the certificate? It would be my honor, Madam Vice President. So, whereas Chuck Lutz, the Deputy Director of the Department of Community Planning and Economic Development, is awarded the Superstar Award for his innovative efforts in establishing the city's navigation center to, be to provide better living conditions for the dozens of people living in the homeless encampment, and whereas the navigation center does transitional housing for some of the community's hardest to house members and addresses an extraordinary public health crisis, whereas Whereas Chuck Lutz led a small team of city staff and community partners to transform a shuttered industrial building on Cedar Avenue into the navigation center in a remarkably short time period of only three months, which included demolition, site preparation, temporary shelter and furnishings, review and procurement, utilities, I'm still going y'all, security, <laughs> property management and operations, again, all that in three months. And whereas more than 100 people received a safe place to live during a winter of extreme temperatures and snowfall totals while they worked on securing long-term housing. Now, therefore, let it be resolved that the mayor and city council do hereby present the certificate of accommodation to Chuck Lutz, together with sincere appreciation and gratitude and best wishes for his future endeavors. Can we please give a large round of applause? Congratulations. Would you like to say a few words? All I like to say is I'm, I'm honored to have this award and I just want to also say that this is a team effort. This was not about me. It's about hundreds of people who all who all came together to make sure this navigation center was done on time. And it's a project that aligns almost completely with my values and that, that, makes, that made, made a big difference in terms of getting, the, getting this work done within the record amount of time in which we did it. Thank you. Thank you so much and thank you for your service to all the right, city. I got a photo here if you want to. Yeah, show it off. I'll get on this side. <laughs> lower <than> Little lower. <laughs> All right. <laughs>
Thank you so much. So our second is the CoStar Award. Has anybody seen the CoStar Awards? We got We're ready. Oh, okay. We got them. We got them. We got them this time. All right. All right. It's kind of like that um, that ad when she says, "You're pulling my leg," and then it's her own dog, right? <laughs> um, our second CoStar Award is awarded to the team that makes a significant impact to the city. This year, the superstars in the CoStar category are Logan Ebling, am I saying that correct? Ebling, Scott Garrick, and Ryan Crick from the Health Department. I'm particularly excited about this because it's relevant to North Minneapolis in particular, a pretty exciting body of work that happened. So Ryan, Scott, and Logan exhibited outstanding teamwork when as members of the health department, they learned that a 13-year-old was operating a hot dog stand in North Minneapolis near the 4th Precinct without proper permits or equipment. They acted quickly and creatively. And whereas instead of just citing and shutting down this young entrepreneur, they collected money in the department to help the boy get the proper approvals and equipment in place while they trained him on safe on safety safely operating the stand and whereas their efforts ignited a wave of positivity across the community resulting in other donations of publicity for the 13 year old leading to corporate contributions even a visit from the Oscar Mayer Wiener mobile uh, and all the hot dogs he could sell for the rest of the summer and whereas this resulted in international acclaim about how Minneapolis helps young entrepreneurs succeed. Ryan, Scott, and Logan clearly demonstrated that they can take a stand and turn it into a real wiener. <laughs> Looking at you. <laughs> now, therefore, let it be resolved that the mayor and city council do hereby present this certificate of commendation to Ryan, Scott, and Logan, together with sincere appreciation and gratitude and best wishes for future endeavors. Thank you, Joe. Some, a few words. I'd uh, just like to thank a couple of the groups that helped us a lot, the Northside Promise Zone, uh, Jody Mulner Hansen, uh, and Neon and Fix, uh, that helped us a lot and helped coordinate it with them. And also our director, Dan Huff. Wonderful. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. So our next superstar is the North Star, which is awarded to an outstanding leader. This year, our North Star Award is being given to Roxanne Young Kimball from CPAD. All right, the 2018 Superstar, whereas in her capacity as the head of the residential and real estate development project coordination team in the Department of Community Planning and Economic Development, Roxanne Young Kimball exhibited outstanding leadership by forming a new team, harnessing their ideas, and leading their efforts to create equitable economic solutions in housing. And whereas Roxanne went above and beyond as a supervisor when she was assigned to lead her newly formed team. She had to post openings, interview, select, and hire and train her staff while accomplishing all work group tasks. Her prioritization and strong people skills, encouraging attitude, and patience kept the new team working well together when she caught pneumonia while she was pregnant. <laughs> Whew. Working from home, Roxanne ensured her team received technical, the needed technical assistance, training opportunities, and advocacy support. Wow. Whereas Roxanne led her team in launching the emergency stabilization pilot program to help 10 families obtain stable housing when deficient landlords' rental license were revoked. 
Roxanne encouraged clear communication to help staff identify needs and provide them with the necessary support, taking on additional duties of her own to ensure people weren't overburdened. Despite identifying these needs during the busy summer months season, the uh, Roxanne's team launched the program in a mere three months. And whereas Roxanne is a leader who truly values the input of all of her team members throughout the conception and implementation of the emergency stabilization program, she sought and encouraged out of the box thinking and solutions to meet the goal of providing safe, stable, appropriately sized housing to some of the most vulnerable in our city. In the words of her team who nominated her for this award, Roxanne, quote, truly listens to her team and values our lived experience, education, input, and passion passions. She hum humanizes our positions within the city and on her team and truly considers us team members. Now, therefore, let it be resolved that the mayor and city council do hereby present the certificate of accommodation to Roxanne Young Kimball together with sincere appreciation and gratitude and best of wishes for future endeavors. Thank you, Roxanne. There you are. A few words. Oh, okay, here we go. Um, well, uh, I just want to thank my team. Um, my, I feel incredibly lucky to be in the position that I'm in and working with the team that I am. Uh, for the city of Minneapolis, I, um, and I really appreciate not only the team that I supervise, but also um, the, the folks that I report to because uh, I feel like we're doing really innovative and exciting work. So thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Congratulations. And finally, the Superstar Award in the Shining Star category is awarded to an employee for their positive influence. This year, we recognize Julie Sakura from the Police Department. All right, so the 2018 Superstar, whereas as a management analyst with the Police Department's Administrative Division, Julie Sakura consistently brings energy, enthusiasm, and positivity to her workplace. And whereas Julie has been in police administration for almost 20 years and has seen and supported many changes, over seven new chiefs and, and many new assistant and deputy chiefs, with all with new ideas and methods, she willingly completes any assignment from complex staffing spreadsheets to putting together three ring binder for goal books while facilitating the implementation of these new ideas. And whereas all the executive staff members are impressed with her proactive attitude, frequently having their reports ahead of time, sometimes even bef before they ask, wow, and, uh, and as she is aware of all of what is needed. Julie has the historical knowledge of the department in all the projects that have been undertaken in police administration over the years. And whereas this past year, when a colleague spent five months out on family medical leave, Julie covered for her and the chief secretary who quit all while handling her own regular work assignments. Handling three jobs at once should stress anyone out, yet Julie's ever-present sense of humor shined through when at the end of this peri time period, she redecorated her colleagues her returning colleagues' desks with cowwebs as well as flowers and a card. Oh, now, therefore, let it be resolved that the mayor and city council do hereby present the certificate of accommodation to Julie Sakura, together with sincere appreciation and gratitude and best wishes for future endeavors. Congratulations. Congratulations. Here you are. And some words? Oh dear, over 29 years, where do I begin? No, I think all the employees of the city really work together to make this a super city. And this will look awesome next to my first resolution for the 1992 Super Bowl. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of commendations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank 
you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations. So I just want to acknowledge all of our yes. superstar winners for 2018. Are there other winners in the audience? Can you please stand up and be recognized? All right. Suzanne Murphy. Um, I believe there are over 376 um, star award winners this year. And so we know that we have amazing staff here at the city of Minneapolis, and we always want to take every opportunity to recognize and give recognition to those outstanding employees. So thank you very, very much. All right. So, good afternoon. I am going to call to order this regular meeting of the Committee of the Whole for Wednesday, May 1st, 2019. My name is Andrea Jenkins. I am the chair of this committee. With me at the dais today are Council Members Palmasano, Johnson, Council Member Ellison, Council Member Warsami, Schrader, Council President Bender, Council Member Cunningham, Fletcher, Cano, and Gordon. Let the record reflect that we do have a full quorum to um, dispense with this committee's duties. And we have three items on the agenda today, including a closed session. I will plan on um, handling the first item, followed by our committee reports, and lastly, we will take up the closed session, which is listed as item number two on our agendas. Uh, so item number one is to receive and file the presentation regarding the 2018 Star Awards. Um, and I believe that presentation will be given by uh, Charles Bernardi from Human Resources. Thank you, Chair Jenkins, members of the Committee of the Hall. First, I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time on your busy agenda to hear a little bit about the Star Awards program, and more importantly, uh, recognizing city employees who work hard to serve, this, to serve the residents of our fine city. I'd also like to thank Col Council Member Palmasano for filling in this, this around noon today um, on, the soup, on the Star Award events that happened earlier today. I know some of you have heard this before, but the STAR Awards program, what is it? The STAR stands for Special Thanks and Recognition. This program began in July of 2014 as a pilot and was developed in response to opportunities identified in multiple previous employee engagement surveys. The program is designed to provide enterprise recognition <laughs> options. Not all, some smaller departments and other departments do not have a robust or formal program. As you heard, we have four recognition, we actually have five recognition categories. We talked about five or four of them earlier. The City Star, awarded to employees who make a significant impact on the city. This year's superstar winner was um, Roxanne Young Kimball. Our co-star goes to an outstanding, significant team. We had three members from what we called the Hot Dog Stand team. Mm -hmm. The North Star, awarding to outstanding leaders. What, that was Roxanne Young Kimball. The City Star was Chuck Lutz, my mistake. And the shining star went to Julie Sikora for her positive influence on the city and also in the police department. We also award city service stars to employees who reach 15, 25, and 30 years of service. Who is eligible and involved? All city employees are eligible for the Star Award program. Any employee may nominate another city employee for an award. The Star Award Committee, made up of representatives from 12 city departments, reviews and approves nominations for Star Awards. When are Star Awards provided? We have two. It's an ongoing process, but we have quarterly nomination periods. 
Um, so we have four quarterly um, award periods each year where we re the Star Awards Committee reviews all the nominations that are received and approves them and also gets input from the departments. Annually, as you saw today, we also give a Superstar Award to a City North Shining Star, Shining Star winners as Superstars. We also have one team category designated as the Superstar in the Co-Star category. Six employees were recognized earlier today. And thanks again for this opportunity. What do approved nominees receive? They receive a certificate with the Star Award branding, the city logo, and they also receive a specially designed coin in the different categories. The, the uh, co-star, the city star, the north star, and the shining star all have the city seal on the back. The service stars have the, respectively, the father water statue, the city hall, and the, and the um, well, I'm losing, losing my mind. What is the name of that bridge? The Stone, Stone Arch Bridge. Thank you. It's been a long day. What are the results? 2018, I was off by one. Between March and December of 2018, 300 cities, 377 employees were approved for Star Awards. City Star, we had three. The Coast Star, we had 361 employees. The North Star, we had four. And in the Shining Star category, we had nine. And there you can see a department breakdown of the different, how different departments had how multiple winners. In 2018, we saw a 105% increase over 2017, large in part to the number of employees that comprised the Navigation Center and Homeless Encampment initiative that the city undertook. In terms of service stars, there were 189 people recognized last year. 15 years of service, 29. 25 years of service, 94. And 30 years of service, 66. You may wonder why there were only 29 people 15 years ago. That was 2004, and we were going through some significant budget cuts in response to a declining economy and also the LGA cuts that were imposed in the city. And I'd also like to recognize my Star Awards committee members and co cohorts. I am the chair of the committee. Uh, Tamara Breedemus is the co-chair. And we have representatives from 10 other city departments. And we meet, we meet regularly to make this program a success. My final slide, and again, I'd like to thank the city council and the mayor for providing resources to provide ongoing support to the Star Awards committee. And what we'll be doing next, we'll be evaluating year five of the program, continuing to encourage city leaders and city employers to promote, promote this program in their respective departments. Nominations for year six of the program will be accepted until the end of the year. And once again, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Bernardi and all the members of the uh, selection team. And uh, congratulations again to all of our star Award winners, um, I move to receive and file this presentation. All those in favor, um, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. That item carries. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And we will now receive reports from the standing committees on matters to be considered by the full council at our regularly scheduled meeting this coming Friday, and we will begin with the Budget Committee uh, and its chair, Council Member Palmasano. Thank you, Madam Vice President. We don't have anything to forward to council for approval on Friday, but I did want to note that we had several department budget results conversations. Those performance metrics were really the result of many years of work um, in partnership from our audit team, from our city coordinator's office, um, and it really shows a new, improved, and consistent way to look at performance across our city. I wanted just to thank all of you as my colleagues for participating so robustly in those conversations. I think that that is, um, they were really important conversations to have on, as we said, on April 25th instead of on December 5th about the kinds of investments we want to make in our city. So thank you for your participation. Thank you, Chair Promisano. And I would just reiterate, um, it really was um, 
really is great to be able to get these um, departmental um, reviews, results um, ahead of time as we move into our 2020 budget process um, that we have, that we are informed with data to to make these important decisions that we have to make. Um, are there any questions for Chair Palmasano? Seeing none, uh, the next report is the Economic Development and Regulatory Services Committee given by the Vice Chair, Council Member Ellison. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, <clears throat> The uh, uh, Economic Development and Regulatory Services Committee has 17 items uh, to bring to the full council. Uh, item number one is uh, uh, approving an application for Rhodey Modern Mediterranean for a sidewalk KFA license, um, seating for 12. Uh, also approving uh, a, an on-sale wine and strong beer license with no live entertainment. Item number two is approving uh, the application for uh, uh, Good Times uh, ca uh, Cafe uh, for a permanent expansion of their on-sale wine and strong beer uh, and no live entertainment um, and the addition of a sidewalk cafe with 10 seats. Uh, also approving um, uh, uh, for a sidewalk cafe license. Item number three is approving application for the Low Brown uh, for an on-sale liquor with Sunday sales and no live entertainment license. Item number four is approving application for Taqueria Los Ocampo for an extended hours of operation license. Uh, item number five is uh, approving an application for Chatterbox Pub for an on-sale liquor with Sunday sales and limited entertainment license. Item number six is approving an application for France 44 Cheese Shop for an on-sale liquor with Sunday sales and no live entertainment license. Item number seven is a uh, is the passage of a resolution adopting the assessment, um, uh, the property assessed clean energy uh, financing for Bryn Glass. Item number eight is a land sale uh, redevelopment agreement with uh, McQuan Natum Auto Sukhan Art and Wellness Center. Uh, item number nine is the liquor license approvals. Item number ten is the liquor license renewals. 11 is the gambling license approvals, and 12 is the gambling license renewals. Item number 12 is approving an application for uh, Harriet Inn um, uh, for an on-sale liquor with Sunday sales and no live entertainment. Um, item number 14 is a uh, 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 adopting a business operating conditions um, for the Northeast Palace. Item number 15 is a uh, is the rental dwelling license conditions uh, for a portfolio of properties. Uh, on item number 16 is the business technical assistance program funding recommendations. And item number 17 is the Great Streets uh, 2019 business district support uh, grant agreements. Uh, and with that, I will stand for questions. Thank you, Councilmember Ellison. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Seeing none, we will go to the next committee report, the Housing Policy and Development Committee. Uh, and that report will be given by its chair, Councilmember Gordon. Thank you very much, Vice President. The uh, Housing Policy and Development Committee is bringing forward three items for approval. The first is a land sale at 2406 McNair Avenue North. Uh, the second is um, approving our 2019 Affordable Housing Trust Fund program policies and procedures, um, and also um, approving the request for proposals for 2019. And the third item, is approving our 2020 Housing Tax Credit Program Qualified Allocation Plan. Happy to take any questions on those. Thank you, Council Member Gordon. Are there any questions? Are there <coughs> any questions? Seeing none, our next committee report is the Public Health, Environment, Civil Rights, and Engagement Committee, given by its chair, Council Member Cunningham. Thank you, Madam Chair. The Public Health, Environment, Civil Rights and Engagement will be bringing forward four items for approval this Friday. The first is approving the mayoral appointments of 
to the Violence Prevention Steering Committee of John Turnipseed and Dr. Rachel Hardman. The Within that is also a mayoral appointment for a one-year term for Kimberly Caprini and approving the residency requirements for John Turnipseed and Dr. Hardman. Number two is accepting a grant from the Pew Charitable Trust in the amount of $50,000 to implement resilience model replication at the Minneapolis public housing sites through MOU-based emergency preparedness, resident engagement strategies, healthy home visits, solar installation, and energy audits for eligible properties owned and managed by Little Earth of United Tribes. The number three is accepting a grant from the Minnesota Department of Health in the amount of $15,000 to conduct lead, blood lead testing in, in events uh, in neighborhoods that have low rates of lead screening. And number four is directing the Commissioner of Health. We had a presentation um, from the mayor's multi-jurisdictional task force on opioids, so I recommend my colleagues take uh, a moment to watch that. There's quite comprehensive um, recommendations, rather robust, uh, ranging from prevention to the criminal justice system. So the action item that came out of that is um, a staff direction directing the Commissioner of Health to one, further evaluate the opioid task force recommendations, including repl replicating the next step program for opioid work, creating a system of navigators to connect those in need of services to services, increased education and harm reduction services, and development of an overdose mortality review program. Two, explore funding options and determine priorities based on potential positive results and feasibility. And third, report back to the Public Health Environment, Civil Rights and Engagement Committee on a quarterly basis basis. I am happy to answer any questions my colleagues may have. Thank you, Chair Cunningham. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Seeing none, our next committee report is the Public Safety and Emergency Management Committee. Uh, that report will be given by its chair, Council Member Connell. Thank you, Madam Vice President. <clears throat> the Public Safety and Emergency Management Committee brings forward four items for review and approval to the Council. Item number one is a contract with Nationwide Mutual Insurance for use of a vehicle by the Police Auto Theft Bait Vehicle Program. Item number two is authorizing a joint powers agreement with the Minnesota Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. <coughs> Item number three is authorizing an increase to contract number C41254 uh, with Patricia and Helen for continued professional public safety coordinator services during large scale events. And item number four, apologies, did I say four before? Um, item number four is a contract with the Downtown Improvement District for the 2019 Minneapolis DID Summer Police and Police Reserve Program. I stand for any questions. Thank you, Chair Connell. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Seeing none, our next committee report is the Transportation and Public Works Committee, given by its chair, Councilmember Wright. Thank you, Madam Vice President. The committee will be forwarding 17 items for full council approval. Uh, items 1 through 12 are a variety of infrastructure projects throughout the city at various locations that are listed. Uh, the sheer volume of those actions uh, certainly uh, belie a uh, busy spring for our department. Mm -hmm. um, and then item 13 is the grant for recycling partnership for multifamily recycling support. Uh, item 14 is the sustainable uh, policy response urban mobility transition uh, program, also known as Sprout. Uh, Minneapolis is a designee. <clears throat> it's a, a European and now international um, program of which we are the only city representing North America, so quite an honor. Item 15 is the contract amendment with Lamenti and Sons Incorporated for the Minnehaha Avenue Sanitary Replacement Project. And items 16 and 17 are uh, low bids for uh, activities and materials for the department. I'll stand for questions uh, and provide details as requested. Thank you, Council Member Wright. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Seeing none, the next committee report is the Ways and Means Committee, um, given by its chair, Council Member Warsame. Thank you, Madam Vice President. The Ways and Means Committee has 14 items to bring forth to the full council. Item number one is a legal settlement. Number two is an agreement with Hennepin County for the Metro Blue Line extension. Item number three is a collective bargaining agreement 
with the Building Trades Inspectors Unit. Item number four is a Capital Long Range Improvement Committee appointment. Item number five is a City Investment Policy Review and Updates. Item number six is a rollover of unspent 2018 appropriations into the 2019 budget. Item number seven is the first quarter 2019 donations report. Item number eight is a bid for the public service building project uh, for tax exempt materials purchases of doors, frames, and hardware. Item number nine is another bid for the public service building, and this is for the interior glazing, railings, and metal panels. Item number 10 is a contract amendment with the June Steel Company for additional structural steel material supply for public services building project. Item number 11 is a contract amendment with Spec 7 Group LLC for changes in scope of work for waterproofing for the public service building project. Item number 12 is a contract with Schindler Elevator Co Corporation for elevator construction and maintenance services for the build building service project. Item number 13 is a contract uh, with Cost Planning and Management International Inc. for Owners Project Representative Services for City Hall Office Space Renovation Project. And item, the final item, uh, item number 14, is a gift acceptance of airfare and lodging for immigration related uh, conferences. And I'll be happy to stand for any questions. Thank you, Councilmember Warsame. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Seeing none, the next committee report is the Zoning and Planning Committee given by its chair, Councilmember Schrader. Thank you, Madam Vice President. The Planning and Zoning Committee will be bringing forward two items for approval on Friday. The first is the approval of a rezoning at 6022 Pillsbury Avenue South, and the second is the approval of a rezoning and street vacation for 1030 through 1040 Como Avenue Southeast, as well as 901 11th Avenue Southeast, and I'll stand for questions. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Seeing none, the final item on our agenda is a litigation matter to be discussed as part of, a, of the closed session. And I move that we adjourn this meeting to room 315 to discuss further. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say no. That item carries, and we are adjourned to room 315.